out to get a Grammy, the prestigious award, the ultimate recognition that your art is valued by the most prominent professionals in the music industry. This ceremony has had her fair share of controversies over the years. Some musicians not winning when people think that they should have, some people winning with people not expecting them to. This often got people to question the voting process of the Grammy Awards or even question the integrity of the members of the Recording Academy and their respect for certain music genres or certain musicians. But in spite of of that and in spite of the fact that the Grammys audiences have been declining since the 2000s and the 2010s, winning a Grammy award is still one of the main dreams of a lot of musicians in the music industry and something that their fans dearly hope they will win. Hello everyone, I'm your host Leo. I make music reactions and deep dives on artists, their albums, or the music industry and music genres. I focus more and more on women in rock, metal, and alternative genres, but the Grammys are such a huge institution that I really wanted to talk about it today. I made a selection of categories. In this video, I am going to be talking about some of the general and pop categories, and tomorrow I will post a video focusing on the rock, metal, and alternative genres. I am going to cover two things regarding each of the categories. First, we're going to go back to last year's winner. We are going to talk about when the category was created. I am going to give you the criteria to win in this category and some facts about the category. And the second thing, we are going to look at together the musicians who were nominated in this year's categories. I'm going to react to that and give my prediction for the winners. The first thing that I'm going to give is like who I think will Will win and the second is who I want to see win. For the first one I'm going to give myself two points if I get it right and for the second one one point if I get it right. And when I react to the winners in February I'm going to give myself a score. Hi, so I'm Leo. In the future, the nominees have been announced. I have the list near me. I haven't looked at anything yet. So I'm going to discover the nominees of this year's Grammys in front of the camera. Regarding your participation to the game that passed me, explain, write your predictions in the type form that I put in the description and in the first comment of this video. And if you do so and I collect your emails, I can warn you if you win. Because the goal of this game is of course to have as many points as possible and to win. Let's get started. First, I wanted to give you some information on the Grammys. I found this graphic detailing the audience of the Grammys over the years. And you can definitely see that in the past five years, like we've definitely have less people watching the Grammys than we had in the 2000s, in the 2010s. This was like when they had the most audience. 2012 was the top year with like almost 40 million people watching. 2021 was like a very bad year with around 9 million people in audience only. So this has been going back up a little bit ever since, but we're still far below 20 million. So the audiences are definitely lower than they used to be. Regarding the people who won the most awards at the Grammys, we have Beyonce. She has 32 Grammys. Then we have Sire George Salty with 31 Grammys. Quincy Jones with 28. Alison Krauss and Chick Corea with 27. And then you can check out the other people. We have Daisy and Kanye West with 24 wins. You two got 22. Paul McCartney, 18. So here are some of the people with the most Grammy wins. Now, regarding the people with the most Grammy nominations, we have Jay Z and Beyonce. They both got 88 nominations. So out of all of this, it's no surprise that Beyonce is the top winner. <laughs> Paul McCartney had 81. This includes like his nominations with the Beatles. Kanye West had 75 nominations. Without surprise, we also find John Williams, Willie Nelson in this list. I don't know the other people. Here were just like a few information that I liked. To be nominated at the Grammy, you need to submit a song, a track, an album, and you have to go through the online entry process. To submit something for a Grammy nomination, you have to either be a member of the Recording Academy 
are a media company. So for the Grammys, a media company is a business that commercially releases audio and video content for multiple artists, which is broader than labels. Like, so for them, it's not only the labels that can submit songs or artists at the Grammys. And the eligibility period for the 67th Grammys was from September 16, 2023 to August 30th, 2024. Something else that you have to know about the submission process is that people have to pay to make a submission. So if you are a member of the Recording Academy, you can make five submissions for free and then you have different periods. If you submit something early, so for them like, so that was last year's Grammy, but it was like in the end of July, it would be only $30 for a member of the Recording Academy. Then if you were submitting something during August, it would be $75. And if you were submitting something in the last week of the submission entry, it was $125. Now, if you are a media company, you don't have free entries. Each entry, if you do it early, is $65. If you do it in the general period, it's $95. And if you do it in the last week, it's also $125. So just to give you an example, Sumerian Records, which is like in the Grammy process considered a media company, sent nine submissions for this year's Grammys. So depending on whether they registered early or in the latest period, they must have paid between $585 to $1,125 US dollars, by the way. Now that you know a little more about how the Grammys are working, I'm going to move on and give you some information. I'm going to focus on each category and at the end of the category, future Leo is going to react to the nominees and give her predictions. The first of the six big categories of the Grammys is Record of the Year. Basically, this award is going to the performer and the whole production team of the song. This award is one of the earliest of the Grammys. It was created in 1959. The first song that got Record of the Year award is Nell Blue, Deep Into the Blue. A few facts about this category. Tom Coyne holds the record for most wins in this category as a master engineer. He got it four times in 2015, 16, 17, and 18, so four years in a row, it's the only person who got it for consecutive years. Beyonce got nominated eight times in this category, but she never won it. Lord is the youngest person who ever got nominated in this category at 17 years old only in 2014. And that was for Royals. And in 2020, Billie Eilish became the youngest person to ever win record of the year at 18 only. Last year's winner was for Flowers by Miley Cyrus. Now, future Leo, please tell me who is nominated in this year record of the year. So for record of the year, the nominees are Now and Then by The Beatles, Texas Hold'em by Beyonce, Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter, 360 by Charlie XAX, Birds of a Feather by Billie Eilish, Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar, Good Luck Babe by Chapel Run, and Fortnite by Taylor Swift and Post Malone. <laughs> What a list! There are so many nominees this year in this category. Let me think. I feel like Beyoncé could win or I could see Espresso winning this category. I don't think that 360 is gonna win. I want to say that I think Billie Eilish is going to win. I don't know, they are... I want, not like us has had also a huge impact this year. My wish is good luck, babe. I really think that Chapel Roan deserves wins this year at the Grammys. I don't think Fortnite is going to win, honestly. I think that Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar is going to win. But my wish is that Good Luck Babe wins in this category. Back to you. Thank you so much for that. Now, the second big category of the Grammy is Album of the Year. This award goes to artists and featured artists, songwriters of new material, 
and their producer, recording engineer, mixers, mastering engineer, credited with 20% or more of playing time of the album. This also is one of the oldest Grammy. Its first year dates back to 1959 and it got to Henry Machini with the music from Peter Gunn. Taylor Swift is now the artist with the most awards in this category with four wins, which is highly impressive. And right below her, we have Frank Sinatra, Paul Simon and Stevie Wonder with three wins in this category. Frank Sinatra is the person who holds the most nominations in this category with eight. And Billie Eilish is the youngest main credit artist to win in this category with When We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go at 18 only. Last year's win was Midnight by Taylor Swift. This is with Midnight that Taylor Swift became the person with the most wins in this category. Now, future Leo, please tell me who is nominated in this category because I have been dying to know. We've had so many amazing albums this year. Please let us know. Well, the nominees for the album of the year this year is New Blue Song by Andre 3000, Cowboy Carter by Beyonce, Short and Sweet by Sabrina Carpenter, Rat by Charlie XAX, Jesse Volume 4 by Jacob Collier, Hit Me Hard and Soft by Billie Eilish, The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess, and The Torture Poet Department by Taylor Swift. Ooh, okay. I don't know anything about New Blue Sun, I'm sorry. Could this be the year Beyonce wins? I don't know because at the same time, I really liked Cowboy Carter. I think it's an amazing album. I not sure the Grammys would make her win. I know that she's been snubbed at the Country Music Awards. Could this be her time to shine? Short and Sweet and Brat could win because their impact was massive this year. The Grammys like Jacob Collier, but I feel like compared to the other albums, I'm not sure he stands a chance. But at the same time, like this is rewarding the quality of the album. So this is so hard. <laughs> Hit Me Hard and Soft could win. Last time she didn't win with her album at the Grammys. I feel like it's because of my own media bubble, but I've seen Chapel Roan everywhere. I don't think Taylor Swift is going to win, considering that she had it four times. She's the person who's had the most wins in this category. That's insane. But I'm going to say, I think that Chapel Roan is going to win. And she's also my wish. You see, I really love her. I'm probably gonna look like an idiot in February, I don't know. <laughs> Back to you, Leo. Third huge category of the Grammys is Song of the Year. This is an award for songwriters. A song is eligible if it was first released or if it first achieved prominence during the eligibility year. And this goes to singles or tracks only. So yeah, this is mainly focusing on the songwriter, unlike Record of the Year, that goes to the whole production and engineering team. The first winner of the award was also Nell Blue Di Pinto Di Blue by Domenico Medugno. Adele is the first woman who got this award twice for Rolling in the Deep and Hello. Taylor Swift is the most nominated songwriter in this category with seven nominations, but she never won the award. With Royals in 2014, Lord also became the youngest songwriter to win this category at 18. And and Irvin Gordon, on the other end, is the oldest songwriter to win the award with the song Unforgettable at 77, back in 1992. Last year's winner was What Was I Made For by Billie Eilish and Phineas. But please, future Leo, let us know who are the nominees this year. If Espresso is not included, I don't know what to say anymore. Okay, the nominees for Song of the Year are A Bar Song by Shabuze, Birds of a Feather by Billie Eilish, Die with a Smile by Lady Gaga and Bruno Mars, Fortnite by Taylor Swift, Good Luck Babe by Chapel Roan, Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar, Please 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 by Sabrina Carpenter, and Texas Holden by Beyonce. I think A Bar Song is going to win. It really killed it in the charts in the US. So yeah, even though it rewards the songwriters, I could definitely see this song win. But my wish is going to... I can't say Chapel Ruin every time. Yeah, so my guess is a bar song. This is so hard. This is really hard. Or Die With A Smile. Bruno Mars and Lady Gaga are good at the Grammys. My guess is Die With A Smile by Lady Gaga and Bruno Mars. My wish is good like babe. 
So here are my predictions for this category, back to you. A little heads up to tell you that my November videos are going to be focusing on Ethel Kane. I'm going to react to her new song and I'm going to make two deep dives on her Golden Age and Inbred EPs. Make sure to check them out, Ethel Kane is one of the most talented storytellers and musicians of our generation. She is worth listening to, so make sure that you watch these videos, they are coming out during this month. But now let's head off to the fourth main category of the Grammys Best New Artists. I think that this is one of the categories that I am the most excited for. So this award is going to take the eligibility period and it's going to reward like an artist that got their breakthrough to the public during this period. Like it's going to focus on if during this time the artist took a lot of place in the public space and impacted the music landscape. So very often we have artists that aren't that new, they've been around for a long time, but this is an award that it doesn't go to like artists that have had their first year during the eligibility period, but artists that got their breakthrough during this time. I know that a lot of people can be confused about that. And last year's winner was Victoria Monet, without surprise. I think that last year I also played the game of guessing, trying to guess who was going to win and I got everything wrong. So please future Leo, let me know who are the nominees this year and I really hope that you guess the winners right. Okay, the nominees for Best New Artist are Benson Boone, Sabrina Carpenter, Nochi, Kroon Bin, Ray. <gasps> Ray, she's nominated, that's so great. Chapel Roan, Shibuze, and Teddy Swim. Damn. I think Sabrina Carpenter is going to win. And this time my wish is going to be Ray. I don't know if she could win it, I don't think so, since we have Sabrina Carpenter, Chapel Roan, even Chabuze. Yeah, she's my wish. I hope she wins this category because she's an amazing musician. Back to you, Leo. The fifth big category at the Grammys is Producer of the Year for non-classical music. This is self-explanatory, this is going to go to the best producer of the year. The first person who won this award is Tom Bell in 1975. Babyface is the producer who holds the most wins with four in this category, but a lot of other producers also deserve a mention. Jack Antonoff, David Foster, Quincy Jones and Pharrell Williams got three wins each. The thing that really bothers me is I think this is a job that really lacks women. The music industry is quite misogynistic and doesn't leave a lot of place for women. I think it's easier for them to be there as performers because people want to see them and listen to their stories, but for all of the jobs that are more in the background, that are not visible, the music industry doesn't really feel an incentive to leave space for women, so yeah, this category really lacks women. We need to change that, all right? Last year's winners was Jack Antonoff. He also won in 2023, and he won last year's for Being Funny in a Foreign Language by the 1979. Did you know that there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard by Lana Del Rey? and Midnight by Taylor Swift. I'm pretty sure he's also going to be nominated this year because he produced the Tortured Poets Department. I would really like to see Aaron Dessner in this category too. Please, future Leo, let me know who is nominated. All right, the nominees for Producer of the Year are Alicia, Derns, Demile, Emil II. We have Jan Fitschuk. We have Mustard and Daniel Negro. <laughs> I think Daniel Negro is going to win when we see what he's produced this year. Chapel Ruin has been such an it, Olivia Rodrigo has had one of the biggest tours. I think he's going to win in this category and he is also my wish. I'm saying Daniel Negro for both. And the last big categories out of the six main category of the Grammys is Songwriter of the Year for Non-Classical Music. This award is pretty recent, I think that the first occurrence was in 2023 and it went to Tobias Gesso Jr. Last year's winner was Theron Thomas. I'm really curious who is going to be named in this category. Please, future Leo, let us know. The nominees for Songwriter of the 
year are. And don't forget to give me your predictions by going in the type form in my description or in the first comment. We have Jesse Alexander, Amy Allen, Edgar Barrera. We have Jesse Joe Dillon. <gasps> Ray! <gasps> She's nominated in this category. I'm so happy. Oh my god! Okay. <sighs> she... I... She's my prediction and my wish. Don't forget to give me your predictions, of course. And we're going to move on to the pop categories. Back to you, Leo. Now, moving on to the pop categories. The first category in the pop section is Best Pop Solo Performance. This is an award that goes to new vocal or instrumental pop recording and singles and tracks can be nominated. This category was created in 2012, so it's pretty recent. Let's clap for Adele. She won the first two awards in this category in 2012 with Someone Like You and 2013 with Set Fire to the Rain Live. She holds the most wins in this category because she also won for Hello and Easy On Me. And the only other artist who won multiple times in this category is Ed Sheeran with two wins. Last year's award went to Flowers by Miley Cyrus. So what about 2025? Please let me know. The nominees for Best Pop Solo Performance are Bodyguard by Beyonce, Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter, Apple by Charlie XAX, Birds of a Feather by Billie Eilish, and Good Luck Babe by Chapel Roan. Ooh, I'm pretty sure Espresso is going to win. And now he ain't speaking about me every night, oh, isn't that sweet like a soul? So you can't sleep, baby, I know that's the me Espresso. Ah, it's so hard. I see Charlie XAX winning in at least a category. I just really don't know which one. I'm going to predict Espresso. It's really moved the pop world this year. I'm going to repeat myself, but my wish is good like babe. Because I love Chapel Run. <laughs> Back to you, Leo. The second category in the pop section is Best Pop Duo and Group Performance. This goes to new vocal or instrumental duo and groups or collaborative pop recordings, and this can go to singles and tracks only. This also is a quite recent category. It was created in 2012, and it went to Body and Soul by Tony Bennett and Amy Winehouse. This category combines previous categories that existed, it combines Best Pop Collaboration with Vocals, Grammy Award for Best Pop Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocals, and Best Pop Instrumental for Performance. Lady Gaga and SZA are the only artists with two wins in this category, out of two nominations by SZA, so I have to say this is pretty impressive. And Coldplay are the most nominated in this category with five nominations. Last year's award went to SZA and Phoebe Bridgers for Go in the machine. I'm really curious to know who are the nominees this year. Please, future Leo, let us know. Okay, the nominees for Best Pop Duo Group Performance are Us by Gracie Abrams and Taylor Swift, Levi's Jeans by Beyonce and Post Malone, Guess by Charlie XAX and Billie Eilish, The Boy Is Mine by Ariana Grande, Brandy and Monica, and Die With A Smile by Lady Gaga and Bruno Mars. This could really be a category where I would see Charlie and Billie win, but at the same time, I know that Lady Gaga and Bruno Mars are popular in the Recording Academy. I think Die With A Smile is going to win, and my wish is guess. <laughs> Back to you, Leo. Next, we have Best Pop Vocal Album. This award can go to albums that contain 75 playing time of new pop vocal recordings. Pay attention to the words, like, so it has to be new and pop and vocal. The award was created in 1968, and the first winners were The Beatles with St. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Kelly Clarkson is the artist with the most nominations in this category, with six. And Adele, Taylor Swift and Kelly Clarkson are the only artists with two wins. Last year's winner was Midnight by Taylor Swift. That's when she announced her new album, Tortured Poets Department, which was an epic moment, I have to say. By the way, I really hope the Tortured Poets Department is going to be named in this category this year, so please, Leo, let me know if 
it is right. The nominees for Best Pop Vocal Album are Short and Sweet by Sabrina Carpenter, Hit Me Hard and Soft by Billie Eilish, Eternal Sunshine by Ariana Grande, The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess by Chapel Room, and The Tortured Poets Department by Taylor Swift. I could really see Taylor Swift win, but she's won last year. And also there are so many new things in pop that I don't think she could win. Don't think I'm gonna bet on Eternal Sunshine because Ariana's never really been popular with the Grammys. I wanna bet on Chapel Roan a lot, but at the same time, it's really her first time at the Grammys, so I really can't know how much they're going to appreciate her work. I would see Billy win in this category, so I'm going to say Hit Me Hard and Soft for my guess. And my wish... I'm going to say my wish is the Tortured Poets Department by Taylor Swift because I would love to see her come home with one Grammy again this year and I think she's going to win something somewhere, you know. The last category that I wanted to react to in this video is Best Music Video. I don't know, I find this award really interesting. <laughs> this is an award that goes to the artist, the video director and video producer of a music video. So the category was created in 1984 and the first winner was Duran Duran with Girls on Film and Hungry Like the Wolf. Taylor Swift is the first artist who won this category with a sole directing credit on her own music video in 2023 for All Too Well the shorter film. Mark Romanek and Nathan Scherer are artists with the most wins with three each in this category for six and eight nominations, which is an amazing score. Last year's winner were The Beatles with I'm Only Sleeping. I'm really curious who are going to be the nominees in this year's award, so please, Neo, let me know. And the nominees for Best Music Video are Taylor Swift by Azap Rocky, Pretty 60 by Charlie XCX, Houdini by Eminem, Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar, and Fortnite by Taylor Swift and Post Malone. So my guess for this category is going to be 360 by Charlie XCX, and my wish is going to be Fortnite by Taylor Swift. Even though I could really see Eminem win, but I'm going to say Charlie, if I'm wrong, too bad for me. So here were the nominees in the general and pop categories of this year's Grammys. You have all my predictions and my wishes. Please let me know what are yours in the type form that I shared in my description and my first comment. So here are the general and pop categories that I wanted to react to. Please let me know your predictions and I am going to put them in my Excel sheet if you want to play with me. The person you said would win, you get to points for that and the person you wish to win is gaining you one point. Follow-up video to this is going to be posted at the beginning of February when we will know who are the winners in the different categories, which I am immensely excited for. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video because I'm going to be focusing on the rock, metal and alternative categories because like they are the genres that I love the most and that I listen to the most. Don't forget to like this video and share it with a friend if you think that they should also play this game. You can follow me on TikTok if you want to see short form content and stalk me on Instagram and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. I was your host Leo and I will see you tomorrow to talk about rock.